as the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. I'm reading the Proverbs at the moment and uh, trying to focus on extracting meaning from them. Um, it's easy to read these things as though they were, I find it anyway, as though they were sort of obvious. And then I get tripped up by something like um, um, chapter 12, uh, verse 9, which says, He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoureth himself and lacketh bread. And I couldn't understand this because to be despised. Usually the first part of the proverb is, is, is the positive one and then the second part, in this part of the book anyway, is the negative. But to be despised and have a servant didn't seem to me to be a particularly positive thing, so I looked in the notes of course and um, it says little esteemed is the translation for despised or is the meaning and the Italian, I looked also in the Italian, in the Diodati, and it's much clearer, um, in the meaning of the proverb is much clearer in Italian than it is reading the King James, because obviously despised, we have a, the, the modern meaning of despised, it seems to be quite uh, extremely negative. But it really doesn't mean, as we presumably as we mean it today, you may not be very highly regarded, but you're okay, you know, you have a servant. But uh, to be honoured, to be greatly honoured and uh, unable to feed yourself is, uh, is not a particularly desirable situation. It, I've seen I've seen this actually. I remember in my translation days, I have uh, I had a colleague, a very a very skilled translator, one that I attempted attempted to emulate. Um, a very diligent man, and who had earned the respect of of everybody who's very widely respected. But in order to, he 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 worked extremely slowly. Um, his, he was perhaps obsessive might be the right word, but he, he, he tried to um, really look into every, every detail of, uh, of the text that he was translating, sometimes to the um, uh, annoyance of, of the customer, I remember. <laughs> um, he would find a situation where he, he he was actually he would he would be correct and the customer would be unaware of 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 the uh, of, of a, a particular linguistic problem with their own previous translations or even their italian and my my colleague would um, patiently try to explain the situation and so he in these in such a case he not only did he earn little because he spent far too long but he annoyed the um, customer and consequently the agency <laughs> but he seemed to fit that uh, he was highly esteemed but he, he lacked bread he was a poor man um, whereas there were other translators who were very skilled and very fast and um, you know less uh, um, perhaps uh, dedicated than my colleague. So that's the sort of situation I suppose that's being described in Proverbs 12 uh, verse 9. So I'm on, in terms of the cannabis cessation I'm still continuing along that path. And uh, although I had, I, I took it a couple of times about uh, 10 days ago, I haven't 
gone back to it and I, for the moment I don't intend to. I've really revised my opinion of, um, of the plant. Um, well, not necessarily of the plant, but I just think my long-term usage has been a problem. Uh, I think, you know, all things in moderation and uh, I, you know, I, I, I just exaggerated, and so I'm looking now more and more at um, what's happening with the cannabis use, particularly in America, where it's been legalized uh, for recreational use in many states, and so the market now, the the the, the producers, companies are flooding the market with all sorts of um, cannabinoids. Some of them are really quite dangerous. Uh, they have this Delta 9 product, or sometimes they're putting synthetics in them. Uh, they're making edible forms. And, you know, young men and women are getting hooked on this stuff and ending up with psychosis because there is such a thing as cannabis induced psychosis, which I didn't really know about. I thought it was just, you know, part of the Reefa madness scare of the 1960s, 1950s probably. But no, um, cannabis induced psychosis is real. And then there are other disorders, uh, very serious um, digestive disorders that can come from prolonged use of cannabis, which is, that one can actually be fatal and very, very uh, intractable. Um, Certainly cessation is the first step, but cessation brings with it all the problems that, you know, coming off a long-term addiction, as I'm discovering. And uh, I was following the case recently, just a YouTube video, of a family in the south of uh, in one of the southern states. Their son, a 17-year-old lad, I think he was, who'd basically become psychotic and uh, was due, due, well, outwardly due to the use of these gummies or edible forms of cannabis or, or uh, vaping, and which had just gone, spiralled out of control in his life. And, and he was probably doing it, he'd been doing it for several years and his family hadn't picked up on it and when they did it was very it was really too late and um, I mean some people have you know have lost their lives over this and his mother and father were saying well he just goes down to the road down the road to the, to the gas station and uh, they sell them over the counter there they've got all, all these products laid out um, I, I don't know whether there's a, a legal age as there would be for alcohol, maybe there isn't, maybe there is, but anyway, he can get these things. And some of them are just deadly, and they contain all sorts of psychoactive substances that with prolonged use, and people den do tend to use them. If they like them, they carry on. And it's sending these young, young men and women into psychotic states, um, from which it's really quite difficult to recover. So, yes, the the weed industry in America, of course, the, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil, and um, unfortunately, there's there's profits to be made here, and of course, companies have muscled in, and they've started making stronger and stronger, more psychoactive forms, and you know, there's a lack of information about as as the, as there always has been around this uh, substance. Um, you know, I, I really knew nothing about its deleterious effects, despite my long acquaintance. And be, and you see, in this country, because it's illegal, I never reported my cannabis use to any medical professionals that I was consulting for any problems whatsoever. I always kept it hid. I kept it hidden. Um, the stigma around it also that uh, it's also illegal, you know, so I just kept it to myself. And I'm sure many people have done that. So hugely underreported uh, um, problems and issues with it. Uh, you know, I mean, I continue to think that uh, 
you know, use it, assuming that one is using a healthy, a healthy strain, you know, a cultivated strain that's not been interfered with, then it's a medicine and, and it has, it definitely has its uses and perhaps even recreational use can be, can be fine as long as it's, um, you know, moderated. You know, I mean, is is it a, a terrible thing to, uh, you know, to one evening to have an extra glass of wine or to have, you know, and, and, and to become inebriated? Well, not really, no. I mean, as long as it's not something that's a regular occurrence. Um, I wouldn't have said anyway. Probably not the best thing, but... You know, particularly young people, they will experiment with these things. But unfortunately, of course, people buy it off the streets, and often the stuff in in uh, in my city, there's a lot of um, uh, cannabis farms. They're underground. They are, it's grown in warehouses, and uh, it's grown in hydroponic conditions or various using various forced systems with. Uh, chemical fertilizers and so the plants are actually not really healthy I mean they should be greater care should be taken over their cultivation if it's for consumption but there's no regulation of it whatsoever of course because it's illegal and the people that are doing it are doing it to make a ton of money and uh, they're not doing it to provide um, a useful and helpful medicine for their for their customers and it's the illegality that's the problem here whereas just just legalizing it hasn't solved it of course because then it becomes you know the market gets hold of it and uh, it, it's just exploitation I and mean, we live in such a wicked a wicked wicked society do we not brothers and sisters well, because there's no there's no adherence to the word of God throughout our society, really. It just leaves us open to these demonic uh, spirits and influences. I do think that they are demonic. Now, this particular young man, his family were said that they were Christians. That they'd, they'd gone to their pastor with the problem. And the pastor had sent them to the um, medical profession. It's not a spiritual problem, apparently. He said it's a physiological problem. And this just upset me to hear this information. But it's so typical, isn't it? Because the high priests of in their white coats are the ones that every even in the church, any church you go to, illness is you know you will be told to go and see your doctor not to um, commune with god through prayer and through study not to you know i mean prayers are, are always advised of course but there's no there's no faith in the land because our medical profession i mean these people by and large they're not following um, the bible you know, I, I won't go to the doctor because I just, I know the philosophy upon which they stand. Um, how they view life, how they view me, how they view people. They've, they've been brought up in a satanic system. And although individually, I mean, I'm sure that there are, you know, many individual doctors and nurses who are honourable men and women and perhaps Christians also. The system is just a wicked, um, a, a wicked satanic system based on on profit. Um, so I was very upset to see that. Um, I mean, the family themselves, of course, people. It, it's true that America is far more religiously minded, particularly the south of America, but I think all over the country, there's more, far more Christians and. You know, so-called observant Christians, but observance really isn't just a question of going to church, is it? Or is, is it at all a question of going to church? 
Um, I think these pastors have an awful lot to answer by setting themselves up as some kind of intermediaries and people will go and speak to their pastor about this and speak to their pastor about the other. But really, uh, on what authority are these men, um, and sometimes women, uh, on what authority are they standing? I mean, very often in these churches, they won't even be using a King James Bible. So, you know, they'll be using a, a, a wicked, uh, false Bible. And they become, yeah, their centers. It, it, it becomes a sort of, you get uh, that kind of, it becomes a social emblem of, of, uh, Almost bigotry, church attendance, regular church attendance, and paying um, paying tithes as well. You know, I've heard uh, American preachers saying that they'll check they'll check up on tithing records, and if they see that somebody's fallen behind or has paid a little less, then they'll immediately call them in to speak to them. I mean, the tithes are seen as being an absolutely central part of Christian life. And meanwhile, of course, the, you know, there's a whole industry around that as well, and around around church planting and um, and the ministry. It's an economic entity. While, really, I mean, to me, I would say that this the mother and father really need to remove their pastor from the heart of their of their concerns and get back to their the Bible in their home and reach out to their son. Um, I mean, they were involved in the economic life. They seemed fairly wealthy. <clears throat> um, the man was, he was busy with his job as, as, as people are, but sometimes it's the, it's the money that really doesn't matter, does it? It's this young man who's lost his way so totally. And I think the family can play a very important role in that. Whereas these people were doing, they were basically, I mean, it was, they were in dire straits. I mean, um, it's very hard to tell from the internet, but I mean, to just be referring to the pastor, the medical center and the police ultimately to solve a problem which is <clears throat> very, very difficult and clearly with um, demonic influence has overtaken this poor young man. And and uh, I, I think there are ways that can be in which they can be helped, but I, the church really doesn't seem to have any answers here because they don't understand the question of trauma. And uh, these problems have their origin in, in childhood trauma. So traumatized parents who are in denial of trauma, traumatized pastors, you know, we need to start dealing with this, uh, with this situation um, at source and really sit down and, and pray and understand that we've all been brought up through uh, trauma it's just ubiquitous in our society and I'm sure it has been for many years too but um, you know latterly it just seems to be it's crying out to be addressed and we just need to build compassion and love in our families and in our communities and uh, I reach out and I pray for this family and for their young son, the daughter as well, who's obviously having to deal with all these problems. And for all the other families that are going through this sort of situation. I mean, there was one chap who'd written in the comments that uh, his daughter um, of 30 years of age had fallen into um, dependency and uh, drug abuse and mainly cannabis and had committed suicide the week before. Suicide. I mean, this is happening. Suicide is, is, is occurring. Mental illness is occurring. 
and uh, it's just going under the radar. And then you try and, you, you know, you, you look the solutions to it. And I started looking around and seeing, well, there's treatment centers and these recovery centers, centers and uh, rehab centers. And there's a whole industry there as well. You know, it's being driven by money and people are, you know, they're, they're obviously they're looking to make a profit and you throw enough money at a, at a situation. I mean, this is what all the rock stars do and the film stars, don't they? They go into rehab and I'm sure it costs a fortune. So that's another, you know, wherever you look, there's deception. Wherever you look, there is deception unless you look in the Bible. Unless you look in the Bible and there is truth and you better have a Bible and not some wicked modern pretense of a Bible. Again, you know, this is something which needs to be sorted out. Oh, anyway, I'm, uh, you know, my, my cessation continues. And the thing that I'm dealing with at the moment is, apart from health issues and digestion, digestion issues, um, anxiety has arisen in me, great anxiety. And I suppose that's linked to the, uh, to the cessation. I'm not sure. I, I would imagine so. And when I first thought about it, I thought, well, I'm not usually anxious. And so it's unusual for me. But of course, I'd forgotten that um, well, 20 years ago, I became um, agoraphobic and I was housebound for six months. So anxiety is part of my history. And uh, it may well be that um, the cannabis use was covering it. This is what happens, I think, you know, on with cessation over such long term use. Gradually, my theory is anyway that a lot of layers of of um, of uh, covering that that have been enabled by by the cannabis. These layers are being stripped away, and it's like a, a regression. Um, to my to my youth and indeed to my childhood so again you know trauma is very much on my mind you know because the reason that i should have chosen to to live my life like that is is obviously an important uh, thing to to try to understand but uh, the lack of information and the, the 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 incorrect information. Um, we live in we live in a world of darkness, do we not, brothers and sisters? So let today be a day dedicated to the Lord, and may we all bow our heads in prayer, lift up our hearts. Praise him, for he is righteous and true. And maybe somebody will join with me, if anybody is listening to this, and pray for this young man and this family in the south, southern states, maybe in Texas, that they come to some kind of understanding and resolution and that this young man be stood up again upon his feet and strengthened and his parents too and his sister also pray for this in the holy name of jesus christ amen <laughs>